Hi. This program is going to take a look at the position of equilibrium. However, before we get much into that topic, let's do a little bit of review of the equilibrium expression. In general terms, the equilibrium constant is equal to the concentration of our products divided by the concentration of our reactants. Here we're given an equilibrium expression and asked to derive from it the original equation. Well, we can recall that the top part gives us our product information. So this is going to produce carbon monoxide and three hydrogens. And this information is going to be about the reactants. So I can say we're going to have methane and water. And then we'll put in the equilibrium arrow. So that's the equation that corresponds to that particular expression. But again, I want to go back to this. We need to recall as we move into this unit what K is equal to, and in general terms, products over reactants. So here I have a simple equation where I have reactants forming products. And down below, I have five different scenarios once equilibrium has been reached. Let's start off with the simplest scenario, the one that I have directly here. This shows the concentration of my reactant and the concentration of my product at equilibrium. And I can see that I have equal amounts. That would then correspond to the equilibrium constant then equaling product over reactant. It would be equal to 1. Graphically, this would look the following way. If I begin with no product, I'll let the reaction proceed forward, it would eventually level off once I've reached equilibrium. At the same time, my reactant concentration would drop down and level off at the same amount. So at equilibrium, I have equal amounts of product and reactant. Now let's consider the other two scenarios that lie to the right of that. These situations favor the formation of product. I can recognize that because I have a higher amount of product than reactant. So in this situation, if I was to put product over reactant, I would get the equilibrium constant being greater than 1. And in this final scenario, I, I have almost no reactant left. We would say that this reaction has almost gone to completion. We've completely converted reactant to product. And in this situation, K would be much, much greater than 1. Let's draw what this would look like. So, and here I'll start with no product down here. And in this scenario, almost all of the reactant is made into products. So I have almost nothing but product left in my container. And my reactant, on the other hand, completely consumed and dropping down to almost zero. Such situations, as I've mentioned, we would say favor the product, or we could say equilibrium lies to the right. Now let's look at the situations that are depicted over here. These favor the reactant. We could also say equilibrium lies to the left. In these scenarios, we can see that we have an awful lot of reactant at equilibrium and a little and almost no product. These scenarios would correspond to the equilibrium constant being less than 1, and in this scenario the equilibrium constant would be much less than 1. Graphically it would look the following. I start again with no product, but I would make only a little. And my reactant would hardly be consumed at all. 
So the magnitude of the equilibrium constants gives us some idea of the relative amounts of products versus reactants. Let's apply this now to the following question. Here we have a particular reaction, and we're told that the equilibrium constant is 10 to the 20th. That's a situation where our constant is much, much greater than 1, which favors product. So I know that equilibrium favoring product, the equilibrium lies far to the right. Also in those scenarios, I have much more product than reactant. So that leads me to A. Thanks for watching.